This video is sponsored by Squarespace, and I bought eight broken PS5 DualSense controllers from eBay to see if I can fix them. First, I need to get them unboxed. There we go. Now I need to get them tested to see what all's wrong and then see if I can fix them. Now, some of you are really smart and have already figured out there's only seven controllers here. That's just because I still have one in the mail that hasn't gotten here and I'll fix that one at the end of this video. I paid various amounts of money for all of these controllers, but I didn't buy these to try and make money on them. I bought them to try and see what are some of the common problems with these new DualSense controllers. When I bought them, I didn't really even pay that close attention to all the things that were wrong. So I'm gonna go through and test each one, figure out what all's wrong with each one, and then we'll get to the repairs. And let's start with controller number one. Got it plugged in, we got a charge light. All right, and for controller number one, the left analog stick is pinned way over to the left side. You can see the up and down movement works, but the left and right movement does not work. So that left analog stick definitely needs some attention. Okay, and for number two, I see no problems with this one. So any of these that I find no problems with, I'm gonna get a PS5 hooked up so I can test them on the console itself and make sure they work. So far, all the buttons on number two work just fine, including the analog stick. So no problem so far, number two. And number three, we have an obvious problem right here, missing the thumbstick cap. Let's see if there's anything else going on. We don't get any sort of battery indicator. Also, this one has been taken apart before and we're missing the R2 and R1. So just no power on number three and definitely missing some parts. This should be an interesting one. And number four. Number four shows the charge light. So number four seems to be mostly working fine. The touchpad button does not work. That's the only problem I've seen with number four so far. Now it's time to check number five. You got the charge indicator here. So far, the only problem with number five is the R2 button is not functional. As I press it right here, you can see there is nothing there. When I press L2, you can see it light up, but no R2. And number six shows the orange charge light. So for number six, these buttons don't register and these buttons don't register. Also for number six, I wanna say a quick thank you to Tyler who sent this in. He offered to just send it in in case I wanted to use it for a video. So thank you so much to Tyler. Also, Tyler has an amazing Instagram where he paints miniatures and I think you're gonna like it. I'll put the link down in the description so you can check out his Instagram. Let's move on to number seven. We have a charge light for number seven. Okay, and definitely a messed up analog stick on number seven. It does not have anywhere near the travel that it should. So that seems to be the only problem so far with number seven. Now I have a good idea of what's going on with all seven of these controllers. I do have one more in the mail that has not gotten here yet, but I'll make sure and get it done before the end of the video. Now it's time to take these apart and see if we can fix them. But before we do that, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you need a website for any reason, Squarespace is a great option. From personal websites and online stores to marketing and analytics, Squarespace gives you everything you need all in one platform. And best of all, it's easy to learn and you can get your website up and running fast. If you have a YouTube or an Instagram presence, you might want to think about a personal website for people to learn more about you. Or maybe you have a side hustle and you're starting to gain momentum and make a little bit of money. You might want to start an online store. No matter what reason you might need a website, Squarespace has your back. One of the things I love about Squarespace is they work with a lot of integration. So if you want to connect your email, or if you want to connect your accounting software, or if you want to connect a shipping service, you can do all of that through Squarespace. So when you're ready to take the next step and start a website, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to purchase a website or domain, go to squarespace.com slash tronicsfix for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get these DualSense controllers taken apart. So let's start by taking a look at controller number one. This one has an analog stick that is pinned to the left.
And this is the offending analog stick. The up and down works fine, which would be this potentiometer. The left and right does not work fine. So that is this potentiometer. So what I'm gonna do is just desolder the pins on the bottom side, then remove this potentiometer. We'll have a look at the inside and then just install a new one. So here is the old one. We'll just take a quick look at it. Okay, and in this one, you can see exactly the problem here. We have like this kind of like white corrosion going on over here. And this little pin right here that's supposed to kind of connect and slide right there is also burned. So this just kind of like corroded away at this trace and that's what's causing the problem on this one. So now I'm gonna get a new one, install that back into this PS5 controller, then we'll test it and see if that fixed it. So this potentiometer just came off of a brand new analog stick. You can just replace the entire analog stick, but there's two potentiometers on each of those sticks. So if there's only one potentiometer that's faulty that you need to replace, then you can make one part work for two repairs. So that's why I didn't just replace the whole thing. Okay, and there we go. That is snapped on there correctly. Now I just need to solder up these three pins and then we can test it. Okay, those joints look great, if I do say so myself. Now I just need to get back together, see if it works. And here we go. Okay, still got charging, that's good. And there we go, you can see that the left analog stick is working perfectly. So number one is fixed, let's move on to number two. And if you remember, number two didn't show any problems in my testing, so I'm gonna save that till the end where I'll hook it up to a PS5. So that brings us to number three. Obviously we're missing an analog stick right here and we're missing the R2 and R1 buttons. Along with those missing parts, number three won't even power on, so that's gonna be the first thing I take a look at. So this one has this piece broken off as well, so it will need this new bottom shell. And the battery has 3.1 volts. This is a 4.2 volt battery. So the battery definitely isn't fully dead. It's just not charging or turning the controller on. So next I need to take a look at the motherboard. Before I take a look at the motherboard on this, let's see what a normal working controller charges at. So here we have almost five volts, 1.69 amps. Now let's take a look at this controller that's not charging or powering on. Five volts, 0 0.07 amps. So that's definitely not charging. I'm gonna try plugging a different battery in just to rule out this battery. Okay, battery has been changed. We still get approximately the same reading. It even says right on the battery, charge current is 1.4 amps. All right, so that tells me it's likely a problem on the motherboard itself. So the first thing I'm doing is just looking to see if there's anything strange about the motherboard, if I see any obvious problems. This LED seems like it's a little bit loose on the motherboard. It kind of was like pushed up, so that definitely could be a problem but it still should charge whether or not that LED is working. I don't see any problems with the port itself. Looks like all of these pins from the port go right over here. So let's flip this over and see what it looks like they might connect to. So it's kind of hard to tell. I'm guessing this is the chip that controls the charging on this thing. So I've been kind of looking at the board on number two and trying to figure out what's going on. And I happened to just plug it in to check it again. And I noticed 
that it actually does power on and is detected now. So I'm actually gonna connect it all back up and just make sure all the ribbon cables are fully seated and that there's no problems there. And then we'll try and power it on again and see if it just happened to be a random loose cable or something. Okay, that's enough to test it. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, and it is showing up on the screen. We have no charge light though. All right, after messing around with this, I put a different battery in it and it seems like maybe that's the main issue. Let's plug it in and see if we get an orange light. And no orange light and no blue light. Oh, there we go. Now we got the blinking blue. Okay, now the solid blue. So it seems like after I do any sort of reset, then those LEDs stop working. It still, it still shows up on my screen, so I know the controller itself is working. So I was thinking this was just a battery issue, but I think it must not be a battery issue. Let's check analog sticks. Okay, and all the buttons are completely dead. Every time I disconnect or reconnect something, it acts a little bit differently. So I'm thinking about maybe this chip I should reflow. This chip is a BGA chip and those are very difficult to mess around with. So I might just reflow this and see if that'll get it working. If you look carefully during the last clip, you saw me just come in and nudge the side just a little bit. And since the chip did move when I nudged it, that tells me all the little solder balls underneath are fully liquid. Now that it's cooled down, I'm gonna get it back installed and see if there's any changes. Once again, it's back together enough to test it. So we have a blue light. Now I'm gonna plug it in and see if the buttons work. Here I have it plugged in and oh, hey, look at this. It looks like the buttons do work. Okay. So this right analog stick, we might need to do a little work to that. It looks like it's very touchy. At a minimum, I think that needs to be cleaned up, but I think we actually have this controller starting to work. We even have a yellow light on the controller telling me that it is charging. So apparently reflowing that main chip on the board did the trick. Now we just gotta get all these little things fixed. Now, since it's only showing minor problems, I'm actually gonna try some BW100 and spray it down in there inside the analog sticks and then work it all around and see if that'll happen to fix our problem. Okay, and after cleaning it, I'm actually pretty happy with this. It goes right back to the middle and pretty much just stays right there. And after testing all of these other buttons, they all seem to work normally. There are a few other things I need to do to this controller to get it fully fixed. The first one is I need to add this ring right here and then put the thumbsticks on this one. And then also this bottom cover is broken right here. So I need to see if I have one of those around here somewhere so we can install a good bottom cover on it. So this is the controller that I made a video about the first broken PS5 DualSense controller. And I was debating whether I should fix this or use it for parts. And judging by what I'm doing right now, I think you can guess which I chose. Okay, there we go. That's on, I'm also gonna use this bottom case from that same controller. So now I just need to finish putting it all back together and then we should be done. One other thing I need to replace before we get the rest of this back together is this R2 button. So these just slide right on. There's a slot right there that they slide into. So this should slide right on just like that. Okay, all back together, let's test it one more time and make sure it all works. Now when I plug it in, should get a yellow light. 
And there we go, there's a yellow light showing that it's charging. So finally, number three is fixed. That was a tough one. I wasn't sure we were gonna be able to fix that one, but it's all fixed. Let's move on to number four. And number four is the one where the touchpad button doesn't work. I'm just gonna plug it in real quick. Just recheck that. Okay, it definitely doesn't work. So let's get it apart and see if we can figure it out. Well, it's easy to tell what's wrong with this one. This one, just the uh, ribbon cable has been torn off. But either way, this should be an easy fix. Just need to replace this entire touchpad that will have the new ribbon cable on it, and we should be good to go. So here we have one with a good ribbon cable and the one with the bad ribbon cable. Now I can just take this and put it right into that shell and it'll work fine. I'm actually gonna take this apart though so we can swap just the parts we need into this one. This ribbon cable is just soldered directly down onto the board, which is something we could technically swap, but that's gonna be something that's gonna take so much time, it's just not gonna be worth it for me. Okay, and now this touchpad is ready to go back into the controller. Okay, let's see if we get a yellow light when we plug it in. Yellow light. But now we need to see if the touchpad registers when we press it. The touchpad is B17 over here. It should go to one when we press. And there we go, it does. All right, there we go. There's another one working. Let's move on to number five. Okay, so number five, the R2 button is not registering. So I'm just gonna get this taken apart and let's take a look at it. So I've slid the R2 button off of this whole assembly right here. I'm really glad that I have one of these because this shows one of the problems that's been really common with these DualSense controllers. You can see this spring right here is broken right down there and that's causing it so there's just absolutely no tension on the R2 button. So I'm gonna take this spring off, replace it with another one and then put this one back together. All right, and to install this spring, I'm gonna put this one side in like that, then put my finger over it right here. Make sure it doesn't shoot off anywhere. And then we'll bring this other side over. And there we go. Need to make sure it is all the way in this groove and all the way in this groove. Now you can see this R2 button has the tension it needs to have again. Then we can take the button itself, slip it right back on, just like that. And we're ready to put this one together. Okay, and we got the yellow light right here. And now let's check the R2 button and see if it's registering right over here. And there we go. So number five is all fixed and ready to go. Let's move on to number six. And the problem with number six is all of these buttons are not registering when I hook it up to the gamepad tester. So I'm gonna get it apart and see if we can figure out what's going on. And no obvious problems so far. I'm guessing maybe that ribbon cable underneath the motherboard is messed up. So that's what I'm gonna take a look at first. And this is the little ribbon cable I was suspecting. I don't see any obvious problems with it. These are the corresponding pads on this board. I also don't see any problems there. I'm actually gonna clean this ribbon cable, all these contacts right here, and then clean the contacts on the board as well, and then put it back together and just see if that might fix it. Ah, no. Oh. Okay, we do have two of the buttons working, but no other buttons work. I think maybe at this point it might be a good idea to just try a new film under there and just see if that will get these other buttons working. So I have this apart down to the frame and this is the problem film, at least what I think might be the problem film. But to verify that, I have another one that I know for sure is good. One of the things I noticed right away and this you won't be able to tell on video, but when I move my spudger across these, I can feel there's little bumps there 
on this one, the original one that I suspect is bad, there's not really bumps at all. They're very tiny. So I'm just wondering if this one just has a bad connection. So what I'm gonna do is connect the motherboard onto this film and then we'll test it. Now I'm gonna hold pressure down with my finger so we make sure that there's pressure on that film. Then I'm gonna plug the battery in, plug the charge cable in, and we'll see what happens. So to test these, I just need to bridge from one side to the other. I'm just gonna use my dental pick for that. And then I'll look up on the screen and see if it shows that button is being pressed. Okay, and if you look behind me, you can see that button is being pressed. Let's try a different one. Let's try the bottom one. Okay, there we go. Let's try one over here. And there we go. So I'm gonna take this film and replace the bad film with this film, then we'll put it back together and test it. And with that film replaced, now I'm gonna put the motherboard in and we'll test it again. Okay, now we have it together enough to test the actual buttons. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Good, 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 good. And there we go. Number six is now fixed. It's time to move on to number seven. So number seven has a problem with this right analog stick. So I need to get it taken apart so we can see what's going on there. Now, once I have this out, analog stick mostly actually feels fine. I'm gonna plug it in and test it like this and see if it works. And look at this. It looks like the analog stick is actually working fine. Let's move it around a little bit. Okay, it looks great. I'm gonna put this thing back together and then I'll test it again and then we'll move on to number eight. As I was putting this thing back together, I noticed another problem. The motherboard right down here is kind of bent and even broken a little bit. I don't think that'll affect anything. I don't think there's any circuits going through that part, but the pin down here, the locating pin is also bent. So that would have affected this analog stick as well. So I need to get this back out and let's see if we can rebend that pin. There we go, right there. So either somebody threw this thing, I mean, let's face it, most likely somebody threw this thing, or they tried to take it apart and couldn't. Either way, let's rebend this bad boy. That looks pretty straight, let's try that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna finish reinstalling everything and we'll test it. So I have this all back together, but it is so dirty on the bottom. This controller is just disgusting on the bottom and it's kind of bugging me just handling it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these grips off. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. That is much better. All right, and now I have it up on the screen. Let's check the right analog stick. That looks great. Left analog stick also looks great. So number seven is done and I just got number eight in the mail. So let's open it up and see what we got. All right, and this one definitely looks a little dirty, not too bad. But the main problem is right here. As you can see, this USB-C port is totally messed up. So I need to take the motherboard out and see if we can get it replaced. This will be my first USB-C replacement on the DualSense controller, so wish me luck. As I was getting this apart, I found the inside of the USB-C port right here. So the inside of the port just got pushed right through the casing of the port and right into the controller. And this is the port itself. I don't think any of these traces have been torn off the board. That's great news. So what I'm gonna have to do now is take this one off of this parts motherboard and then install it onto this good motherboard. Now with this new port installed, we can put it back together and test it. Now the number eight is together, let's give it a quick test. All right, yellow light. 
And number eight is also fixed. So I've just fixed eight out of eight PS5 DualSense controllers. I think I've fixed pretty much every problem these controllers could have, except for maybe water damage. Thank goodness. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and I hope you have a good one. Also, I did end up checking number two, and number two works just fine on the PS5 console. So for number two, there wasn't actually anything wrong. Thanks for sticking around to the very end of the video. If you want to play a fun game, now go down to the comment section and see how many people claim that I did never test number two. Thanks again for watching.